Today, we take the OctoPrint on Linux install just a little bit further. A while back, we did an OctoPrint install on top of a fresh copy of Ubuntu Linux. Now, I've been working on a lot of different projects in the basement lately, but I've been getting a lot of questions on that install. Mainly, how do we make it better? How do we do multiple instances in Linux? How do we do multiple cameras? So that's what we're going to walk through today. Now, this is a pretty long video, and it's a whole lot of screen share with Linux commands. But as always, I'll do my best to walk you through the whole thing and leave you documentation in the description below. And I do recommend you use a USB powered hub if you're doing multiple USB devices, especially cameras. It's going to work a whole lot better that way. All the info should be left in the description, so let's go ahead and get into the config. So this video takes from where we left off on the Linux video. This is assuming you have Octoprint installed on Linux, Linux is installed, you're able to get to it from your IP using PuTTY. All of that stuff is in the previous video, so go check that one out first before you come to this one. This goal is to get the multiple instances installed and a couple of cameras. So let's go ahead and open up SSH. The username is whatever you set your account when you set up Linux, mine is Chris, password. And as always with Linux, if you haven't messed with it in a while, it's always good to do an update. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and do sudo apt update in your root password. This will check the repos for any updates that are available. And then if there are updates available, mine has been updated, you can do sudo apt upgrade. We are up to date, there's no upgrades to install, but if you need some, this will get it installed for you. So we're up to date. Now the multiple instance install is relatively straightforward. We just have to copy some files and make some other instances. I'm going to do that with some sed commands so that we can switch out certain parameters inside those files easily. We don't have to edit each one. All these commands and everything I do will be in a document in the description below. You can just copy and paste. So first thing, let's take a look at the structure that we have in place right now. Let's do an ls-als. This will show us everything, including the hidden folders. So we have our octoprint directory right here. That's where we installed the base of the code. And then in dot octoprint, that's where all the instance specific things are going to be. If you do an ls on octoprint, the main code directory, and take a look in the virtual environments folder that we set up, and then look in bin, these are all the scripts that we use to set up octoprint, all the Python stuff, all the things that needed to build octoprint. We don't have to deal with this. We really just need to copy the instance that we already created in this .octoprint folder up here. So if you list etc init.d, you're going to see our octoprint right here. That's the first script that we need to copy. So basically, with one command, we're going to copy this script, and everything inside it, we're going to change from octoprint to octoprint2. So we can start another instance. So let's go ahead and change directory into slash etc slash init dot d. Again, basically we're making a copy and changing everything that says octoprint to octoprint2. And we're going to have to run all these commands as root because we're running one after another and we're getting permission denied when using sudo. So let's go ahead and do sudo su. And you can see right here, that made us the root user. So now we should have the permissions to run our commands. So we're going to use this sed command, and again, basically all we're going to do is switch everything that says octoprint to octoprint2. And if we take a look at that directory again, you can see octoprint, and now we have octoprint2. And let's go ahead and add a couple of others. We're going to go ahead and create four all together. So we'll do octoprint3 and octoprint4. And then we'll list again. There's all four of our instances, and we need to chmod each one of these so they have the proper permissions. So we'll do chmod 755 octoprint2, octoprint3, and octoprint4. Take a look again. All of them are green. So that should be good, but since we use user Chris for everything during the Linux install, we should probably change these from the root user over the user Chris and group Chris. We can do that with a chown command. So we'll do chown, and we'll do Chris as the user, Chris as the group, with a colon in between them, octoprint2. We can do that for octoprint3 and octoprint4. If you take a look again, all the users have changed. Now we can change directory over to etc default. And if you take a look in here, you'll see octoprint. And we're basically going to do the same thing. 
we're going to make some copies, changing everything that says Octoprint to Octoprint2. So we're going to do the same kind of thing with that said command in etc defaults. We're just going to create Octoprint 2, 3, and 4. We're making a copy, but we're just changing a few things inside. You will have to update this user right here in the command with the user that you're using. So there's Octoprint 2, Octoprint 3, Octoprint 4. There's all four of the Octoprint instances. And now that the copies and changes are made, let's go ahead and chmod those. Octoprint 2, Octoprint 3, Octoprint 4. And then we can take a look at them. They're all in green. And same as we did before, we should change the user for these. So chown chris colon chris, octoprint2, octoprint3, octoprint4. Take another look. And the owner and permissions look good. Now we have the files copied and changed a little bit with the sed command and the permissions correct. But we still need to do a little bit of cleanup because I was too lazy to put it in the sed command. So let's take a look at these octoprint 2, 3, and 4. So let's do nano octoprint 2. The user Chris is fine, but I should have put it in that sed command to change this to octoprint 2. So it knows where its base directory is. Config file is going to be the same way. Everything else should stay the same. The sed command got the rest of it. So let's go ahead and control X, Y, and enter to save. Let's go ahead and update that octoprint 3 file as well. Like that, everything else is good. Control X, Y, enter to save, and then Octoprint 4. And we'll want to update dash RC to make sure that these start when the server restarts. So we'll do update dash RC dot D, Octoprint 2, defaults 99, Octoprint 3, Octoprint 4. And now you should be able to reboot your server. Reboot now. Now the reboot has been completed and we're logged back in. But my 1804 server is taking forever to reboot, but I think I know why. That's because 1804 has a really long grub splash screen, and we can make that go silent. So let's do that real quick, just as a side tip. Let's change directory into etc default. We'll take a look, and let's do sudo nano grub. Now be careful in here, but down here in grub command line Linux default, you can take out this line, and replace it with quiet splash no resume. This will keep it from waiting for you to select an option on reboot. This should make it a lot faster. So we'll go ahead and hit control X, Y, enter to save, and then you do need to reload grub or update it. So we'll do sudo update dash grub. And next time you reboot, it should be faster. On with the tutorial. So let's jump back to the web GUI and make sure that all of our interfaces are working correctly. We'll go to the main one here at dot three. We can log in. So this one's good, but it worked last time, so no big deal. So let's duplicate this tab, and we'll do 5001. We have our second instance. We'll duplicate this one, 5002. Good there. Duplicate one more time, 5003. So we're good with the instances. We've got multiple set up. You can go ahead and run through the wizards and set them up how you'd like. I do have three different main boards plugged in, so I'll show you how to separate the different printers now. So let's tail dash capital F var slash log slash syslog. And let's just plug in our printers one at a time. So there's a ramps combo board. We'll just call that log because that's where it was before. There's an SKR 1.3 board. And there's an MKS 1.4 board. We can go ahead and control C. Thankfully, it looks like all these have serial numbers. That makes things much easier. And you'll notice they list as USB 1-6 dot and then a number. We've got a 4, a 2, a 3. That's because they're all parked on the same powered USB hub. So with this information, we're going to create a 99-USB.rules file in udevrules.d. So sudo nano etc udev rules.d 99-usb.rules. Shouldn't be anything in there. And then we're going to paste a couple of lines. So you need a subsystem TTY for each printer that you want to plug in. And I just updated these as log, SKR, and MKS, because that's how we plug them in. You can do it however you'd like, but we need to update the serial numbers, the ID vendor, and the ID product. So let's go ahead and add the serial number to all these. So just after this comma, do ATTRS, pay attention to the case, and then in curly brackets, we need serial, all lowercase, and then a curly bracket, and then 
two equal signs, and then in quotes, the serial number. So let's scroll up. You can do that in PuTTY. We'll take a look at the syslog that we had before. The first one we plugged in was this Arduino ramp sandwich. We'll grab the serial number right here, scroll back down, and we'll paste it right in there. We also need to update the ID vendor and the ID product. ID vendor is 2341. We'll update that right there. ID product 0042. We'll update that right there. This just lets us know when we plug that device into this server, which one's which and what we want it to be called. This puts a symbolic link on that board. This will make more sense in a minute. Let's keep updating. We'll go up and grab the serial for the SKR. I take that back. The SKR looks like it doesn't have a valid serial number, but it does have a unique ID vendor and ID product, so we will be okay. Let's do ID50 for the ID vendor. We'll go ahead and erase this serial entry. We'll update ID vendor and ID product. And it's okay if you don't have serial numbers, but that is a definitive way of telling the boards apart. Just as long as you have a unique ID vendor and product. So let's go ahead and update our MKS board. It does have a serial number right here, so we'll go ahead and add that in. Our ID vendor is 403, and our ID product is 6001. And now we should be able to tell all the boards apart. So let's go ahead and save this file, Control X, Y, and Enter to save, and let's reboot. sudo reboot now. Reboot's complete, let's log back in. Now if we take a look at the devices, ls slash dev, we can see our unique printer names. Log, MKS, SKR. And that's good. The system knows all the printers are there. So let's jump back to the web browser. And on the main one, let's go to settings. And on serial connection, we're going to add an additional port called slash dev slash log. That will tie our ramps board to this session. We'll hit save. We'll go ahead and reload. And then in serial ports, you should now see log. And you can connect up. And we're connected, so we're good there. So let's head over to instance 2, settings, slash dev, and let's put our MKS board here. We'll save that, reload, it should be in the serial ports, MKS, connect up. It did connect, we got a min temp error because there's no thermistor on there, but that's probably a good thing. So we're okay, we did connect, that's fine. So let's go to 3, and let's put our SKR board over here. So we'll do slash dev slash SKR, we'll hit save, reload, SKR should be here, go ahead and set baud rate if you'd like, if you don't want it to auto search, 250,000, hit connect, and it connected up, we're good. So these are just bare boards, there's nothing connected to them, this is just to show you that you can set these up as printers. So they're all connected, we should be good. Now we need to work on cameras. So that's the multiple instance install of the video. If you don't care about cameras, you don't need to go any further. This should get you where you need to go. You can install as many instances as your hardware can hold. But now, let's jump into the camera portion. If we go to the main instance, you'll notice we have one camera, because I have three cameras plugged in. This one right here, that is down on the floor behind me. So that's fine, but we need one for each, and we need to be able to tell them apart. And in our last Octoprint on Linux video, we created a script and a daemon for that. So if we take a look at the home directory, we can CD into scripts, and we'll take a look at scripts, and we have a webcam and a webcam daemon. Let's just take a look at what webcam looks like. We'll go ahead and edit it, sudo nano webcam. And there's not much in here. It's just a basic start and stop. So we can exit out of here, control X. Let's take a look at that webcam daemon. This is where it actually does all the work to set the resolution and the frames per second, all that good stuff. So these files are gonna have to be different. And we might as well create a start script for each one so we know which one's starting. So let's exit out of here, and let's just make some copies. So sudo cp webcam, let's make a webcam 2, a webcam 3, and a webcam 4. I don't have four webcams, but if you wanted to, this is how you do it. And let's go ahead and copy that daemon as well. sudo cp webcam daemon, and we'll make a 2, a 3, and a 4. Now we need to edit those daemon files to grab the camera we expect it to, but we don't know which one's which, and that's where our udev file comes in. So back to tailing the syslog, tail-f slash var slash log slash syslog, and then I'll unplug the cameras, and I'll plug in the webcam that's working right now on our main instance. That's a C170, 
and then I'll plug in one of the 270s and the other 270. Now we have all the information we need to rename these devices so we can call them by a device name. So we can control C to stop that. Let's go back to editing our UDEV rules file. And this time we're going to add three lines for the three cameras that we're using. And these are subsystem video for Linux. But we update them the exact same way with serial numbers, product IDs, vendor IDs. And we can name them whatever we want. So let's name video log, video SKR, and video MKS. Again, same with the printers. We just scroll back, update serials if they have them, vendor IDs, product IDs. So the first one is a C170. I know they don't have serial numbers, but that's okay. The C270s do. So we've got a vendor ID of 046D and a product ID of 082B. So we'll scroll back down. I'm going to put the 170 on log. We'll do 82B and we'll just delete the serial attribute because it doesn't have one. Then we'll scroll back up. Our next camera was a 270. They do have serials. We'll take it serial. It's a 046D and a 0825. So we'll make this second one our SKR cam. Paste the serial there. And we already have the ID vendor and ID product correct. And then our last C270, we have a different serial number. I believe this is actually the correct line that I pasted. And it is. We'll make sure to confirm that it's the correct serial. I'll go ahead and delete it and repaste it. And there we go, there's all three entries for the cameras, and now we'll know what to call them in the config files. Let's go ahead and control X, Y, enter to save, and let's do sudo reboot one more time. Now, reboot's complete, let's jump back in. Let's take another look at the devices, ls slash dev. Here's all our cameras, video log, video MKS, video SKR. Now we need to start a streamer for each one of those cameras. We already copied our scripts, if we change directory into home Chris scripts, we'll see all of our webcam scripts. Let's go ahead and make the updates to the webcam script that starts the daemon. So we can just cat webcam because we probably don't need any updates on that one. It's just going to run the default webcam daemon that we created the first time around. But let's edit webcam 2. And we're just going to change the start to webcam daemon 2. And we can change the kill command webcam daemon 2. We should be good there. Control X, Y, enter to save and we'll edit number three. Same thing, change it to three, change it to three, we'll save it, and number four. Four, four, exit, Y, enter to save. We're good. Now we need to work on the daemon files. So let's work on the first one, sudo nano webcam daemon, and in camera options, we're gonna add a device, dash D, forward slash dev, forward slash video log. That's going to push the first webcam daemon to use the video log device. So we know that it's going to use that C170. And then we're also going to have to tell it a port number so that we can tell them apart. So we're going to update this MJPEG streamer line. And after dash W dot slash www, we're going to do space dash P and then list the port number. The default one is going to be 8080. Same with the line underneath it, after the www-p8080. And this file should be good. Let's go ahead and control X, Y, enter to save. We'll edit webcam daemon 2. Let's push it to device dash D forward slash dev forward slash video MKS. So that'll push it to that camera. The device is good. We still need to update the MJPEG streamer. So we'll do dash P. And then this one, we're going to make it 80, 81. Same with the line underneath it, dash P, 80, 81. That one's good. Control X, Y, enter to save. And webcam daemon 3. We'll push it to the SKR cam, dash D, slash dev, slash video, SKR. And in any of these files, if you want to up the resolution, change the frame rate, go ahead. It shouldn't hurt anything. Device is good. Down here, dash P for port, 80, 82, and below it. Same update, dash P, 80, 82. Control X, Y, enter to save. And because we copied these files from the original, we shouldn't have to update permissions, so we should be good there. We will want to update RC local so that it starts all the new webcams when the server reboots. So we'll do sudo nano slash etc rc.local. This is where we put our start script the last time. 
Since we only have three webcams, let's just add two more entries. So we're not trying to start something that doesn't exist. Webcam two, webcam three. Control X, Y, enter to save. So with the daemons updated, we just need to update our HA proxy file. So let's change directory into etc HA proxy, and then we'll edit sudo nano HA proxy dot CFG. And we'll scroll all the way to the bottom, and we'll start by copying the webcam backend right here, and we'll change it to webcam backend two. And when you see a two, we'll go to this port number, which the new port is 8081. Leave this webcam as one, and we'll copy it again, and make a webcam back in three. Webcam three, 80, 82. And we'll scroll up a bit, and under front end public, we'll add those webcams as well. So we'll just copy this line, and when the path begins with a webcam two, we use back end webcam two. When it ends with webcam three, we use back end webcam three. Control X, Y, enter to save. And now we should be able to reboot and all our changes should be pulled in. Our reboot's complete. Let's go ahead and head back to the browser. Here's our main instance. If you go to control, this is the default webcam, but it is the C170 camera that we assigned in the UDEV file. So that's good. If we take a look at settings, we go to webcam. It's just on the default stream, webcam action stream. So that's fine. That's where we want it. Snapshots are on 8080. That means it goes to the correct camera. You can test it. Time lapse and everything should work just fine. So now let's jump to instance two. There's no camera here. So let's go to settings. And when you create multiple instances, most time it's not gonna do your start and stop server commands. You have to copy and paste them from the main one. And it's also not gonna do your web values. So we can just grab them from the main instance over here in settings webcam. We'll just copy it, go back to the second one, paste it right here. And instead of webcam, we're gonna do webcam two. Snapshot URL, we'll copy that. And instead of 8080, 8081. And you also need your path to your FF MPEG. It will be exactly the same for all the instances right there. The only difference is on the other instances, we're gonna to have to call them directly. We can just add the IP on here. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.3. That's the address of my Pi. Of course, we've already updated webcam two. Go ahead and hit test. And there's our second camera. We can save this. Let's head to instance number three. Settings, webcam. Again, we'll just copy all the values from the previous instance, like so. You can go through and test all these. We need to update the port for the snapshot. We're on 8082 for that camera. And then we're on up here, we're on webcam three. Go ahead and test. Webcam three is working. Test the snapshot. It's working as well. Hit save, and we should be good to go. Three full instances, three full cameras on top of Linux. And there it is, multiple Octoprint instances and multiple cameras running on top of Linux. And you can probably run more instances than I did in the video, it just depends on the hardware you're using. Again, it's always useful to use a USB powered hub if you're using lots of different USB devices. And when you're upgrading Octoprint, you should be able to use the web UI just like any other Octoprint instance without impacting this install because the Octoprint actually lives in those .octoprint directories. I will try to fix some of the commands that I didn't fix in the video and leave them in the document in the description below. Now this video isn't for everyone, I understand that, but if you're trying to control multiple 3D printers from one source location, this might be for you. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.